We are entering a new age. Everything is changing. The way we learn, the way we work, the way we live, and especially the skills needed to get ahead professionally. There are three new skills that insightful professionals are acquiring right now, and it's putting them head and shoulders ahead of the rest of the market. These market differentiators are giving them a real competitive advantage. Now, you don't need to go back to school to get these skills. I'm going to tell you what they are, and more importantly, I'm going to tell you how you can acquire them without spending a red cent, just a little bit of your time. So let's get started. Market differentiator skill number one, take your PowerPoint to the video level. It's much easier than it seems, and I don't want you to, you know, get crazed listening to me. I want to share a quick story and then some statistics before telling you how to do this. We were running a webinar at AP Now, which we do twice a month, about how to provide training for P-card programs within a company. Most of the attendees were mid-level professionals professionals, accounting type people, finance type people. They weren't, you know, techie people, okay? So people just like you. When the speaker asked about the training these professionals were providing to the employees in their companies about P-cards, almost half said they were using video. Why? Not only was it, the prefer it, was it preferred, as I'll show you in a minute, but it's also easier. You can record the training once and then show it to people at a time that is convenient for them. You don't have to all be available at the same time. You definitely don't have to all be available in the same place. Now, you may be scratching your head wondering if this is really true. Consider the following statistics. 85% of US internet users watch videos online. That, including you, if you're watching me today. That number may be even higher when we're talking about accounting and finance professionals. Fact number two, viewers retain 95% of a video message compared with just 10% of that same message presented at text. There's a huge advantage if you don't have if you have to do training and you don't want to continually answer the same question over and over again. Video is a big help there. Number three, even at the very highest level, 59% of executives say they prefer video-based learning over text. It's the wave of the future. But you say, how are you supposed to acquire this PowerPoint video skill? It's really quite simple. Start by taking one of your PowerPoint presentations. If you don't have one, put one together. If you don't know how to put one together, look on YouTube for a, a talk on getting started with PowerPoint. Maybe we'll do one in the, in the future. I like Kevin Stratford's approach to basically anything technology related, but anyone will do. I'm going to be totally honest with you. I use a lot of PowerPoint, but I taught myself PowerPoint over 20 years ago. It's not hard. It's really quite simple. I'm not talking about you becoming, you know, a PowerPoint uh, highfalutin, you know, superstar, but just, you know, your basic PowerPoint uh, presentations. And since it's a Microsoft product, it will use a lot of the commands you are already familiar with from Word and Excel. And by the way, although I'm saying PowerPoint, and I will continue to say PowerPoint through this talk, Google Sheets works, as will Apple Keynote. They'll also work for this. But as I said, for ease of presentation, I'm going to say PowerPoint, but you'll know what I mean. Now, I'm sure most of you have been on Zoom calls or our Teams meetings, so you've been in front of the camera. There are two simple ways to record your video. Number one, it can be done right inside the PowerPoint uh, functionality. When you have PowerPoint opened, click on the insert tab, and when the ribbon appears, click on the screen recording. The second way to record for free is using Zoom. Inside Zoom, you share your screen, and in this case, you'll share your PowerPoint application, not your whole screen, okay? So just the application. If you are using the free version of Zoom, though, keep in mind that you're limited to, a, you'll be limited to 40 minute uh, recordings each time. But if your needs are longer, you can break it down into parts and have, you know, a 20 minute or a 30 minute and have several of them. This is probably a good idea anyway, as it is difficult to remain animated and interesting for long periods of time. That's it. Practice a few times and then you're good to go. That's your market differentiator, skill number one. Market differentiator, skill number two. Crafting inquiries AI can understand. Now this one is a lot harder than it may seem at first glance. This will enable you to extract valuable information using AI. Writing precise queries means giving the tool, be it ChatGPT, Copilot, or one of the many other tools emerging seemingly overnight, a lot of information. Let me give you a quick, a quick simple example. I try and get ChatGPT to help me with marketing stuff. My first attempts at it were abysmal. The information that ChatGPT was giving me back made me sound like a bad late night television advertorial. I learned quickly you have to give it context. Now, 
when I try and get help. I almost always start off by telling it the target audience is accounting and finance professionals. The more context you can give it, the better the results will be. But it takes time. And sometimes, no matter how try, hard I try, I don't get anything I can use. But you want to do, do it. So how can you acquire the skill to craft good AI queries? Practice. It's, it's that simple. Practice. Set up an account at both ChatGPT and Microsoft Pilot. To access ChatGPT, go to openai.com and register. To get the Microsoft Copilot account, go to copilot.microsoft.com and register. For that one, you need to have some sort of a micro, Microsoft account. Other than that, both are free. Although, to be fair, both have paid versions. Once you have the accounts, practice. You can give it commands for both your personal life and your professional life. I tried to help get it to help me arrange furniture one time. That was a disaster, probably because I didn't write the queries explicitly enough. Again, the more context you can give the, the tool, the more information, the better the results are apt to be. But this is a new skill for most of us. So this means Means that most of the time a long query will be better than a short one which leads to our next skill which I think will change the way every single person uses Excel but before we get to that if you're getting value from this talk I'd love it if you'd hit the like button or the thumbs up it sends a message that you're getting some value from this talk and I should make more like it a personal thanks to everyone who has liked this talk market differentiator skill number three creating Excel spreadsheets so even an AI bot can understand understand them. You may have noticed that I put an emphasis on writing queries so AI could understand them. This is becoming increasingly important and will filter into Excel. I believe we're at the crossroads with Excel on the verge of a new evolution, if you will. Let me explain by taking a very brief, very, very brief look at the history of some of the advances in Excel, which actually was a remarkable copy of Lotus 123, but that's another story. In the beginning, there was just a spreadsheet. There were no fancy, fancy pivot tables or macros or even functionality that we take for granted today that's in our ribbon, just basic math. So for example, if you wanted to uh, calculate an average, um, of a column of numbers. You'd have to first add up the column of numbers, then you'd have to count how many items there were, and then divide one by the other. Today, we don't think twice about the math behind the functionality for, for finding averages. We just put, you know, at, av, abg, and then we add the range. We don't think about it. But at that time, we didn't have that functionality. A whole cottage industry sprung up of what were referred to, what were referred to as bolt-ons, mostly Lotus bolt-ons, and people made money selling them. They were basically mini programs for functionality that we take for granted today. They included things like average, mode, medium, net present value, internal rate of return, etc. This was followed by the introduction of macros, which as many of you know, can be quite complicated. Today, we stand at the beginning of the next evolution in the spreadsheet. This will be giving AI commands that will allow it to do complicated work needed to create macros and, and more. Eventually, but we're not completely there, yet, although it is starting to ha happen, you will be able to give simple written commands to get the results you are looking for as long as they're clear. So for example, you might give it the, the command, give me the average cost of apples in the spreadsheet called cost. cost you'll have called it cost, uh, but you'll have to label your columns very precisely and one will be cost of apples. This is a very simple example, but it's not hard to see how this can will replace sometimes complex macros, but it all all depends on the setting up of the spreadsheet in a way the AI bot can understand and you can explain clearly. In fact, Microsoft, as you may know, has introduced a number of AI tools. At this point, I believe all of them have the term Copilot in their name. There is even a Microsoft Copilot for Excel. So that kind of tells us where they are going. But before starting a deep dive into the various specialty Copilots Microsoft is creating to help you do a better job and advance your career, it is important that you understand how the basic Copilot, which they call Microsoft Copilot, works. That's why we did a separate talk on what is Microsoft Copilot, how to use it, and how you can get it for free. You can watch that right now using the link that has appeared on your YouTube screen and is in the description. Good luck.